Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hellfine. I am Gregory Zarian. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Now, the conversation is all about men and their health. Guys, how much do you spend talking about your health to your family, your loved ones? How much do you go to the doctors? Well, there's a consensus all over the country, and it's about men getting healthier. November is now known as Movember Month. It's where men have the conversation about screenings and getting their health in line. And September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Men, how much time do you spend talking about prostate cancer and prostate cancer awareness. This past May, May 21st, Health Day News, and this is the conversation all over the country, posted this. In a highly anticipated move sure to unleash heated debate, a prominent U.S. government advisory panel is recommending that men of all ages, I'll say it again, men of all ages no longer be screened for prostate cancer by undergoing the prostate-specific antigen, PSA, blood test. If any of you are not aware of it, it's the conversation all over the country, especially with urologists and family practice doctors. Do you support it or don't you supporting, support it? Joining me tonight is Glendale Adventist's very own urologist, Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi, and we're going to dive into that debate. Welcome, doctor. Thanks, Greg. Okay. All over, all over the country, this task force is saying no more to PSA screenings. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, let me just say, as a urologist, prostate health and prostate you know, management is near and dear to my heart. And for anyone who's had a family member and who's had prostate cancer or has suffered consequences of prostate cancer, one can understand that why it's such an important emotional uh, issue for, for has, has this affected your family personally? Not, not my dad, but yes. Okay, so, uh, so there's a personal connection absolutely. to it. Absolutely. And this is what I take care of. You know, this is what, my passion. So, so one of those things that you know, one kind of hears in this news is, well, what is it based on? Well, you know, the, the, this panel, the U.S. Uh, Preventative Task Force, um, made, made their recommendation based on a study that showed that there was no statistically difference in men dying for prostate cancer if they were or were not screened for prostate cancer. And that study was a U.S.-run study that wasn't as well run as its counterpart study in Europe, which did show a difference. So, uh, so, so in Europe it showed that prostate screenings were much more effective than not having them? Well, it showed that it did help okay. preventing deaths from prostate cancer, et cetera. And so they, they went ahead and made a blanket statement that just because one study doesn't show any benefit, then perhaps we should do away with, with the entire testing or screening for prostate cancer. How do you feel about that, doctor? That, that to me is a travesty for men because a lot of men, all they perhaps care about is whatever the news coverage says in, on ABC or NBC, and we don't have the time to look in, or they don't have the time to look into the, what study was done, what did the study show, why, why is the uh, recommendation being made the way it is. And I think that the travesty is the fact that, you know, if someone just hears that and says, well, I don't have to do it anymore, see, the government says I shouldn't do it. But that's not the case. The whole story isn't there. Then hold on, hold to that thought. I, I'm, I'm nothing more than just a great cliffhanger. We're going to find out more about the story when we come back with Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi. And here's my question for you. Do you believe prostate cancer screening is important? Do not go away. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Did you know a simple test and a quick exam can save your life? Men, take responsibility for your health. Get checked. Tell your friends. It could save your life. Welcome back to Healthline tonight. The conversation is all about men and their health. And right before the break, we left off talking about prostate cancer. Did you know that other than skin cancer, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in American men? Families and friends and men, I hope you're listening. We left off with an awesome word of me this. Joining me is Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi, urologist from Glenda Adventist Medical Center. Doctor, how many lives are saved from screenings? I guess we don't have the exact number. What I can tell you is 200,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer every year, and 30,000 men die of prostate cancer in the United States. It's a, it's the second, le, second uh, largest leading cause of uh, male deaths in the United States. This is a huge deal. Um, and up until the PSA coming, coming around about 30 years ago, we had no way of 
um, screening for prostate cancer other than rectal exam to tip off a patient who may be developing prostate cancer early. And often, patients were presenting with late stage cancer, and all we could do for them as urologists was keep them comfortable so they don't die of horrible pain when it metastasizes to their bones, et cetera. Well, that, that was a horrible way to be. Sure. Um, now with PSA being around, men are able to be found to have prostate cancer earlier and, and therefore at a curable, curable stage and therefore not get into, in, less men are getting to that stage of horrible metastatic disease. So is there a tangible number that I can quote you? No, no one can. But what I can tell you is there's been a stage migration of prostate cancer since the advent of PSA, which means where people were coming in with stage three and four, which means they, were, they had disease it's in their all bones, over there. they're coming with stage one and two, which means it's locally advanced or locally contained. And if you do radiation or removal of the prostate, the patients are cured. Now, this comes with an asterisk. What is an asterisk? Which means we are probably overdiagnosing a little bit of men with widescreen okay. screening. What does that mean? It means that it's not a perfect test. And it's, a PSA is just a number. So it doesn't mean that just because someone's PSA is elevated, you know, anything has to be done, at least initially. I think the, the important thing is, though, um, we can, because we don't have any other way to, to figure out who is going to have a lethal prostate cancer. And who isn't, this absolutely isn't, makes sense. Who isn't, I think, to make a blanket statement to, to do away with screening altogether is wrong and I think injustice. It's, well, I just want to say this. Um, some researchers have called the PSA test the poster child for overdiagnosis. And you are part of the American Urologist Association. Quoting your association, the AUA is outraged and believe the task force is doing men a great disservice by disparaging what is now the only widely available test for prostate cancer, a potentially devastating disease. Correct. So going from stage three and four and finding out that somebody may have it one and two, doesn't it, it seems pretty easy, it's doesn't it? It's easy. And, and I think, I think the, the, the argument here is why should you diagnose someone with prostate cancer if they're never going to have any problems with it? Completely agree with that. Except I, as a urologist, and most, no one as a urologist has a crystal ball to can, to can, that can say, this gentleman's prostate cancer is going to kill that person, and the other person's is not. We don't have the capability yet. And so, so that's the problem of perhaps over-treatment that has been the criticism, and at the crux of all the criticism that is being hurled upon uh, of the PSA test. But doctor, don't you find that over-treatment is better than no treatment at all? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think over-treatment... Because information is information. You find out that somebody has prostate cancer, you can treat them. You find out they don't have it, they then show up in your office, which is through stage 3, 4, Correct. and then possibly it's fatal. Right. And my, my, I, think, I think most people would tell you there's no way to know who's going to have that outcome in 10 years. So, yes, the, 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 the over-treatment may take place. It's kind of... I'll give you a corollary. If there's a bug on your table, you're not okay. going to unleash an uh, atomic bomb to kill it. You're just going to use a, sw a fly swat and I'm kill just it. Use way. my hand right. and smack right. it. Okay. And I think if we could figure that out for prostate cancer, or have a better ways of treating, uh, better ways of diagnosing a lethal prostate cancer, then we can perhaps do that. Now, what we do for prostate cancer right now is not all the time using the sure. atomic bomb to to get rid of it. But I think you know that's that's what people think about. Having said that, with advances in prostate cancer surgery and treatment, a lot of the side effects that people worry about with prostate cancer surgery is not an issue anymore long term. Because we, you know, with robotic surgery, for instance, we could we could spare the nerves that you know can can result in better erectile uh, function at, after the after and and incontinence is almost a virtually a not, not an issue anymore. Well, let's address um, incontinence and erectile dysfunction when we come back, because we're also going to share with you what the signs and symptoms are of prostate cancer. And we're also going to do a little true and false with the doctor. Do not go away. <laughs> 